Now, when you look at Paul's overall statements about the law, you get some fair, fairly interesting things that happen. You have the law increased sin. The law was put in place to increase sin. Now, Paul does not mean that there, that there would become more sin. What he means is that the if there he says in Romans where there is no law, there is no sin, right? So when God puts a law there, there's an effective increase in sin, but they were already sinning. Okay, I think it's very important as we enter this part of Galatians to understand. Um, so when he means increase sin, you know, it would amount to an increase of sin because the law is put in place. But there's other aspects of the law to understand, okay? And Paul's going to elaborate on that. Real quick as just a quick background. Remember this. The Judaizers were telling the Galatians, you must be obedient to the law and have faith in Christ. Something along those lines. And what Paul said in our last session, which is a commonly, while well, it's a glorious thing that we're saved by grace through faith, it's a commonly misunderstood what Paul was saying. He was he was saying that the Judaizers did not understand the nature of, of God's covenantal offerings, okay? That, uh, that the Old Testament law was a covenant, okay? And, and the new faith was as well. Um, you can't be under uh, the works of the law, but also have, you know, faith. Okay. So it says this, to give a human example, brothers, and he's going to sort of um, help, help us to understand better. Even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it's been ratified. That wouldn't be a covenant, right? If you go give someone a dollar and they exchange it, they don't come back later and say, hey, listen, um, we're changing the price to a dollar fifty. Now I need 50 more cents. And then you just go, yeah, that sounds good. That's not going to happen. That's not the way covenants work. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance came by the law, it no longer becomes a promise. I'm sorry, it is. it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise, okay? So clearly the law was never intended. It, it was never intended to fill, fulfill anything about the promise to Abraham. Now this is quite, as far as I can tell, uh, maybe I don't know enough about what the Judaizers were teaching, but this should have been quite the stripping down of what, the, of what they had been saying because they clearly did not understand these covenantal aspects. Um, and so now their, now their statements about obeying the law and being having faith in Christ look very shallow. And it looks like their teaching of both perspectives are way off. And not only that, but it misunderstands that this promise to Abraham come, it was prior to the law. Now, why, if the law comes in later, would that change the promise to Abraham? That's, again, like Paul was saying as an example. You wouldn't give a dollar to someone and come back later and charge them more. That, that would not be a covenant, okay, even in, by human understanding. So why would he make a promise to Abraham and then say, oh, by the way, here we go. Here's a law as well. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so it says, um, Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Okay, so by, it's very interesting. So the law is put in place, as we see in other, other Paul's writings, to increase sin. But here is another aspect of the law, in that once the law is put in place, 
Israel sees their sin. And so ironically, it, it protected Israel in a way. Okay, it made it very clear um, what God's will was. So while it, on the one hand, increases in sin, you could make an argument saying it effectively, though, could have decreased sin because so many people were at least trying to obey it. Or maybe it took them from taking sin too far. They could look at the law and see it as a reflection of themselves. And it may have, you know, created a sort of um, protection that kept them from going even further. And I don't think this directly comes out. I think this is more the commentaries that you know I've read over the years about this and what I've re recently read about this, maybe just kind of imposing their views of the law on, onto the text. I'm not sure. But it does seem to make a lot of sense in, in what, we're, what we're reading here. Then it says this, is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Well, you can actually answer that yourself right now, right? There's a promise made to Abraham. The law comes. If the law had a particular and specific function and was a completely separate uh, covenant, then the answer to that's, you know, certainly not, which is what Paul says, certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So the law did serve a very good function in its relationship with the person of Christ, okay? It's not that it's completely devoid uh, of a relationship there. I want to read this last part before we get to chapter 4, um, and I don't mean to burn through it here, but um, so now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until coming, coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came. You see how the protection until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. <laughs>